Okay, so let's have a look at some functions questions. Uh, there should be some good tips in this video. So um, it's quite difficult to sort of, you know, go through every single method in uh, the sort of overall method videos. These example videos are more to show sort of, you know, the actual individual tricks for different questions that can be useful. So um, let's get started. Um, the function f is defined for each positive three digit integer n by f of n equals two to the x, three to the y, five to the z, blah, 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 blah. If m and v are three digit positive integers such that f of m, okay, so we've got that f of m is equal to three squared times f of v. And so if, in, in, other, in other words, well, f of m is two to the a, three to the b, five to the c, and that apparently must be equal to um, two to the, if we say f of v is uh, two to the x, uh, three to the y plus two, because the three squared would go in there, and uh, five to the z, then we can immediately see that this is a prime numbers that a must be equal to x, b is equal to y plus two, and c is equal to z. In other words, they are the same number, um, except that uh, v has a, um, or uh, m has a tens digit that is two higher than uh, what v does. And so if we subtract them from one another, all we'll have left is the difference in tens digit. So the answer is going to be 20. Okay. Uh, very important for this kind of question. That is what we call a linear function. And uh, just immediately sort of uh, trick to solve these questions. The linear function uh, only uh, f of x equals some constant times x. Those are the only, that's the most general linear function you can have. There's no, uh, th there are no other linear functions. And that's the definition of a linear function which the GMAT likes to throw in a few times. Um, and so in other words, um, and this, uh, this again is sort of a linear type function. So we're just looking for the any function that's in this form and the only option there is E. Okay. F of X equals that and G of X equals that. What is the sum of all values for M for which, okay. So first thing we need to do is actually find out what, um, what, what these equations are. So uh, f of m minus 1 is going to be 5m minus 1 squared minus 4, and that apparently needs to be equal to g of m squared plus 1, so 3 times m squared plus 1 plus 1. And then if we expand that out, we're going to get 5m uh, squared minus 10m plus 5 minus 4, so plus 1 equals 3m squared plus 3 plus 1, so plus 4. And so then rearranging that, we get 2m squared uh, minus 10m minus 3 equals 0. And so m squared minus 5m minus 3 over 2 equals 0. And so we can, using our tip from the other video, we can immediately see that is the sum of the roots uh, or minus the sum of the roots. And so the answer is going to be D. f of x is a function, what is the va value of f of 2? Okay, nice easy question because there's very little we can do. All I can do is just sub into these things so that we get f of 2 involved. So in the first one, if I put in x equals 2, I get f of 2 all squared equals 2 f of 2 minus 1. And in the second one, if I plug in x equals a half, that will give us f of 2. So f of 2 equals eight times a quarter minus one. And so obviously that's enough. That's told us what f of two is. But what about the first one? Well, this is in the form a squared, uh, if we say f of two is a, a squared minus two a plus one equals zero. And so a minus one squared equals zero. And so the only possible value of uh, f of two is one. And so that alone is enough and that alone is enough. Now, just an important note, 
this is a quadratic and so it's very tempting to say oh well there's there could be two solutions so uh that's not going to be enough on its own but actually in this case um we uh we found that there is only one solution and so it's that rare case where the quadratic actually is enough on its own and that's why you always have to solve quadratics okay function y equals px squared minus 4x plus q in the xy plane attains a minimum value what is the value of x well so all we need to know is that um what what does q do q, all q does is it sort of if we've got this graph all q will do as we add, vary q is sort of shift it up or down and that's not going to affect where the minimum value is whereas what p does is that sort of changes the whole shape of the graph so we do need to know p to know where it attains its minimum value but we don't need to know q and so p alone is enough but q alone is not enough okay does this general quadratic graph have two intersections with axis x okay and so then we know that uh the this first one just tells us that whatever graph that whatever graph f of x is f of x plus two is just shifted two to the left and so in other words, if that has two intersections, then the original graph had two intersections. So that alone is enough. Whereas f of x plus two, uh, we know that has two intersections. Um, and so what, what graph could we uh, have? We could either have sort of this, or we could also have something like this going the other way. Remember that it's a general quadratic, so a could be negative. And so um, by shifting those up and down, uh, we know that this is the graph of it shifted two up so maybe the original graph was actually down here in which case there aren't two intersections so that alone is not enough okay nice easy knowledge question is x plus one a factor of uh f of x well the way we do that to check if x plus one is a factor we plug in f of minus one and that because we we need to set this to be zero so x is minus one and that needs to equal zero and that's all we need to know so in other words, two alone is enough, and one, oops, uh, one alone is not enough. Okay, again, nice easy questions here. Um, is f of x equal to f of one minus x for all x? So the way I'd handle these kind of questions is just have a look at it. And what you need to um, be able to do is replace any x's. When, when you've got something like this, replace any x's with one minus x. And that needs to leave the function completely unchanged and um, vice versa you need to be able to replace any one minus x's with x and that also needs to leave the function completely unchanged so in other words well this isn't going to be unchanged uh, this thing is equal to one minus x one plus x so that's not going to be unchanged this thing would become uh, one minus x squared minus x squared and so that's that is changed whereas this one you can clearly see if we swap x and one minus x around there's absolutely no difference um whereas this one um obviously there is a difference so nice easy way of doing these questions that would be d again just show you how common these are linear uh expression so we're just looking for anything in this form that's all it could be and so the answer is e nice and easy Function fm is defined for all positive integers, the product of, okay, so these are three consecutive integers. Three consecutive integers, as we already said, is divisible by three factorial. So the answer is C. F is equal to x minus one over x. F of x is that. Uh, which the following equals f of one over x. So let's find out what that is. F of one over x equals, well, we just replace any x's with one over x. So that's gonna be one over x minus one over one over x which in other words is that which looks to me like that's going to be minus f of x just because it's minus our original thing um which isn't one of our options which is a bit annoying uh so instead uh maybe uh let's just look at this it looks like it will be something similar to minus f of x so let's try what let's find out what f of minus x is Well, that's going to be minus x plus 1 over x, which is the same as what we have. So the answer is b. Okay. 
Now this, there's a nice cheat way of doing this. Um, if f of minus x equals f of x for all real number values x, we call this an even function. And that occurs if all powers um, sort of, uh, how do I put this? Um, um, actually, no, I think the GMAT might uh, make these too tricky. So basically, the way we can do this is just um, uh, we want f of minus x to be minus fx. And so effectively, just plug in uh, minus x for x and you want to be able to factor out a minus at the end. So in other words, uh, in A, this is an even function. So if you plug in minus x, nothing's going to happen. All the minus is going to disappear. So that's not going to work. Uh, same thing here. Uh, here you'll get a minus on the top and the bottom. So they'll cancel out. So that won't work. Uh, and here you'll get a uh, minus on the top and a minus on the bottom. So that won't work. Whereas here, you'll get a minus on the top and no minuses on the bottom. And so that will be the right answer. I suppose if you if you are interested in knowing uh, the idea of even functions or odd functions, um, the way to do it is um, f of, so if f of minus x equals f of x, then that's called an even function. E.g all powers must be even. Um, and f of minus x equals minus f of x is uh, called an odd function. All powers must be odd with the exception that you can divide um functions by one another and so for example just like numbers um odd over even well sort of not not quite like numbers but odd over even will be odd uh odd over odd will be even uh and even over even, you can't say much. So in this case, e, for example, that's an odd power on an odd function on top and an even power on the bottom. And so e was the only possible answer. But it's not too much harder to do it with f of minus x equals minus f of x, just plugging in minus x. Okay. f of x equals x squared over x to the 4 minus 1. Uh, what is f of 1 over x in terms of f of x? Well, so let's plug that in. f of 1 over x is going to be 1 over x squared over 1 over x to the 4 minus 1. Um, now we need to get, uh, we need it in terms of f of x, which means we need to somehow get back to this kind of form. So just looking at this, we can multiply top and bottom by x to the 4 to get sort of something like what's on the bottom of f of x. So we get, if we multiply by x to the 4, we get x squared over uh, 1 minus x to the 4, which looks very similar to f of x. In fact, that's just minus x squared over x to the 4 minus 1, which is f of x. So the answer is minus f of x. Okay. Given f of x equals x over x plus 1, okay, um, so what value of k does f of f of k equal 2 thirds, so we need to find what f of f of x is, so f of f of x is going to be equal to um, oof, x over x plus 1 over x over x plus 1 plus 1. And so multiplying top and bottom by x plus 1, that's equal to uh, x over 
x x over 2x plus 1. Yep. And so now that must be equal to 2 thirds. And so uh, 3x equals 4x plus 2. So it looks to me like uh, minus 2 equals x. So a. Okay, very similar to before. Let's uh, factorize this one just to make it a bit clearer what it is. It says x uh, 2 minus x. Um, okay, and so effectively, when I see this kind of question, I'm just thinking, well, which of these functions can I swap x with 2 minus x and 2 minus x with x uh, without changing the function? And so hopefully it's very clear immediately that b fulfills that. And so we don't really need to look any further. None of the rest will work, as in we can swap x with 2 minus x and 2 minus x with x, and it's the same function, so b.